Hello, hello, my dear friends. Welcome to Inside Out Electronic channel. This is Uncle Misha, and today we have something new and big on the bench. And this thing is too big to fit the bench properly, and I have to kind of put it on diagonal here. So, what is this? This is Weller, and this is the SD map, and it's big enough to actually completely cover my bench, and I won't be using this one this this uh, bench anymore because this one is um, not as nice and even I, I, I think that gonna be so I purchased this on Amazon and this is Weller uh, ESD mat I don't remember the exact model name I'm gonna put it right in here got it on sale so if you can too if you look at my link right here so let's just do some unboxing and quick check what we got. Here we are. It's actually quite rough and it was shipped in huge box. I was kind of surprised. I thought this is not something I order. Like when I got this huge box, just I, from my thinking, that was not not supposed to be that big. I think I got this on sale because it was returned, I think, by someone, right? And uh, I got it like, I think 20 bucks off or something, or 30 bucks off. Alrighty, so actually pretty nice surface here, and it's packaged actually quite well. Inside there is like um, um, foam, a uh, foam, what I'm talking about, the bubble wrap to prevent this thing kind of collapsing. So that's going to be, I will unwind it and um, yeah, so this is how it goes. That's pretty neat bubble wrap actually. I've never seen this kind of bubble wrap before. Really good. So I think that I'm not going to have enough space on my bench right now to demonstrate you how big is this thing. So it looks like we need to do some work on my bench, but I'm gonna show you just part of it. So on the back we have this nice, um, it's, how do you call it, anti-slip surface. It's like um, it's not rubbery. It's like a, it's like a rubberized material. So thickness of this thing is I need the calipers. So thickness of the mat is two millimeters. It's two millimeter thick mat. That's pretty good. Pretty good. So in uh, advertisement it says it is heat and chemical resistant. So that's we're gonna test because it's very important when you, for example, your solder uh, accidentally hits the uh, the, the surface you're working on, it's gonna make a burn mark. So I'm not even sure how this a uh, fixed mat, uh, how how much heat resistant it is. Obviously not gonna purposely solder on it, right? They're gonna use something. And this this surface I have here is like completely not heat resistant. It's like from dollar store kitchen kind of uh, liner of, for cabinets and stuff. So this thing is like very bad for heat resistance. This thing's supposed to be very good. So let's see what, we, what else do we, we got. So we got the 10 millimeter grounding tops. I think this is for connecting, for example, this mat to the other one, like cascading them. I, this is my assumption because otherwise I don't understand why we need that. Or maybe it, when you work at uh, your workbench, you have special top which you connect it to. So it's an option. And not, oh, okay, my bad. That you can be, you can use it as I just mentioned, but I think it's more like this. It's more to connect. Is it Weller branded? No, it's like generic stuff, I guess. This is to connect this guy and this guy, and that's pretty much it. So in this, I fix it brand. It's obviously they are interchangeable, which is actually pretty cool. There is a two things which I like actually more. Curious, it's going to be probably it has the banana plug and it has has also the restrap which is actually cool. So banana strap can be connected to some kind of grounding post on your workbench. So yeah, but because these guys are 10 millimeters, they are interchangeable. So I can use this one in the, on, this, my, on this mat as well. So nice. This is what it comes with. So obviously this resistance, I think has to be one mag ohm resistor right here. 
and actually can double check that with my multimeter just sitting right here in this big mass so this big mass gonna be changed soon because I'm thinking to wait what I'm gonna measure resistance between yeah that's interesting so yes I understand now so you're gonna measure resistance between this end and this end and what do we have we have Almost one mega ohm resistance. Yep, that's correct. So the the strip, the restrip doesn't have any resistance. Curious if this gonna measure something. What? Look at this! I just wrapped around the fabric, which is actually uh, conductive, and we have one mega ohm resistance. This is amazing. Okay, obviously this not gonna measure anything. So now that we know that this thing is actually one mega ohm resistance right here, so next step for me would be to test. Well, I don't, I don't have any chemical to test chemical resistance, but I clearly can try to test a, a heat resistance. So it doesn't really specify any like particular temperature. Let's say it's supposed to be like you know 400 C resistant. No, it doesn't say that. Oopsies but at least it's supposed to be okay to withhold a brief touch of soldering iron, all right? So let me prepare my soldering iron. Okay. I have a soldering iron handy. And now it's gonna heat up quickly to four hundred C. Four hundred C. I'm gonna do it in some little corner right here. We have four hundred C. Okay, let's do it right here. Uh oh, actually it did made a dent maybe not so it does it doesn't melt like crazy like for example if you're gonna make this piece of plastic you see it's not obviously <sighs> oh that was a bad idea now it's gonna stink but it's still yeah it leaves the mark it leaves the mark because this thing I have here is gonna melt like immediately so this still has the little mark. So I'm not sure how much is heat resistance is this thing. Let's see. It's gonna happen in 300 C's. I didn't prepare a little um, something with water. Okay, we can clean up nice and shiny. This is actually genuine huckle. Okay, we have why this stupid thing shuts down all the time? 300 C. Okay, let's do it on the ha. Huh. Looks like 300C is okay. It doesn't leave a mark at all. 400 is clearly a problem. 300, nothing. Absolutely. Oops. Why is it doing that? Not at all. Well, it depends how long you keep it. Like probably if you just, you know, take your soldering iron, just throw it, oops, like that sitting right here. But, all right, so I'm not gonna go there and figure out the like, what is the exact temperature we start, mel start melting uh, this ASD mod. 
usually I don't even work with 400. This is crazy. 300, 325, that's tops. Even though I try to I tend to use the lower temperature as possible. So if this thing withstand 300, just touching like this, that's pretty, pretty darn good. For me at least. Like, what do you guys think? It is good temperature resistance or not? I think it's good. For my purpose, it is. Um, obviously, it, it's not... Um, it's not probably going to be too like mechanically uh, wear resistance, but still, it actually feels pretty solid. For example, if I start cutting something on it, that's going to be definitely a problem. So I don't want that. Um, so for that, you have to use self-healing mat. So uh, for like any other mechanical, like for example, hammering something, obviously going to use some kind of uh, strong thick surface to do so but as a sd mat in jet for general electronics i think this is really good so my next step would be to completely make a clean slate on this work messy workbench so my idea is remove all this crap put this sd mat under on the table surface and uh, actually clean up a whole bunch of crap around here so this is the reason i decided to get this one so so what are you gonna do you're gonna take a photo of all this stuff before and then after and we discuss guys with you you like it what you see after my improvement or not so let's do it So my friend, that's been a while and now I have new page as you saw the wide angle photo it looks completely different. We have new lights, we have IKEA pegboards, all tools are now um, placed on the pegboards, and I have soldering iron here. Now it's right handed because I'm right handed, so it's on the right side, it's much easier. Um, new light require a um, completely different white balance for the camera, but I think I did it okay. So this uh, kind of proper skin colors and things like that. We'll see how that's going to work. But the most of all, I'm happy about this new matte surface. So this is anti-static matte, which I placed on top of IKEA table. So this white, a little bit here, is IKEA table. So width-wise, it's completely covering the standard IKEA table. And... Uh, so, sorry, depth wise and the width wise is probably eight centimeters short, like this distance, but it's still perfect. There's nothing going to be here, so I think I'm pretty happy. But obviously, time will tell how good it was or it is uh, after we, it will be used for a while and things like that. If I have something heavy and sharp or which can scratch the surface, I can this uh, I can use this silicone plus mat, which is going to be here to make sure I'm not going to damage the thing, but otherwise. It's looking really good. So I think I'm gonna wrap up and I'm definitely recommending the this anti-static mat. Looking actually pretty decent in color wise and as well like it's not stupid boring color or some, some something like that and also a the it looks like durable surface. So I think it's going to be uh, wrapping up uh, this video. Uh, thank you for watching, guys. Please stay tuned for new more videos. Stay safe and ciao.